Hey, this is Michael from Brainy Face Project and ChatGPT03 just came out and I'm going to put it through its paces. I want to try doing some vibe coding. Vibe coding is basically just telling AI what you want to have done and then the AI writes the code for you. So I want it to write some Python for me and I've got four different things I want it to do. The first is I want to create ASCII art. Everything's going to be related to ASCII art, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. That's a mouthful, um, but it's ASCII. -I. And basically, it's numbers, letters, symbols. And you take that and you combine it together to create cool artwork. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have a little application that it runs on my computer. I don't even need an internet connection. And then I can type in text and it makes big block letters out of that. And hopefully I can get hundreds of fonts to work. The second thing I want to do is I want to be able to take my webcam and take that video input and convert it to ASCII art in real time. And then the third thing I want to do is I want to take an image like a JPEG or a PNG and convert that to artwork. And then the fourth thing, just kind of a bonus, we'll see if it can do it, is to take a video, like an MP4 video, and convert that into ASCII art as well. Take all the frames and do that where it's converting it in real time on the computer. So um, this is vibe coding. With ChatGPT03, it's one of the super smart models that OpenAI just released this week. Today's date is April 18th, 2025. So let's go ahead and jump in and see how to do this. The prompt that I used was really straightforward, but I did explain everything that I wanted. It's good to be specific when you're giving it the initial prompt. So I said I wanted to have Python code. I wanted to be able to use it without an internet connection. I wanted to have a lot of fonts. I wanted to be able to dynamically set the justification. So I could go uh, left, right, center. I wanted to also have a graphical user interface that I could use so I didn't have to sit there and type like in a command line interface like this. And while I'm in here, I'm just gonna show you. I've got five different files. So I started out with the original and I had a little bit of troubleshooting. I took the error and gave it back to ChatGPT03 and then it fixed it. But I started to tweak it and say, well, how about we do this? How about we add something else? And that's the fun part of it is you just dynamically tell it what you want to do. I ended up here with the fifth file and I'm going to run this. By the way, if you're not familiar with Python and you really don't know how to set it up, let me know. I didn't want to get into that level of detail in this video, but I could do a separate video that kind of sets up in doing Python in a virtual environment for vibe coding with ChatGPT03, or it would work with Grok, or um, you could use it with any other of these large language models that are good at coding as well. So uh, Gemini, by the way, too. Gemini is fantastic. I think it's one of the best right now. So let's go in and run this. I'm just gonna type in Python to give it the Python command to run this file here. And I'm just gonna hit enter. <clears throat> and then we'll center that up so you can see the graphical user interface. So right now I've got a box. I can just type in hello. And as I type in the text, you can see it dynamically shows up on the screen, brainy face, just like that and I can choose the justification, left, center, right. I can also, if I want to, change the stacking order. Let me type in one, two, three, four, and this would be for top to bottom, and if I want to, I can also do bottom to top. And I can go in here to the font. Let me just change this here to greetings. And then I can choose different fonts here. There are hundreds of different fonts that are available in here and it's just so much fun to go in and choose from all these different fonts if i have a line where it doesn't fit i can change the maximum width as well um, and then i can change the simple overlap as well so lots of different options in here let me go in and i'm going to show you something cool here um, big. So if I want to, I can change the background color. And this is something that I thought of is, you know, once you got the text on the screen, you can do a copy to clipboard. You just click and it puts the text into the clipboard so you can paste it. But then I also wanted the ability to change the background colors because I thought I want to be able to do screenshots. And a good example of this is if I go in and I do like Halloween, there's a font in here I noticed the other day called Bloody, yesterday when I did this. And I thought that's a cool Halloween font. So let me center that on the screen. 
and then I'm going to reduce my max width to get that a little bit more centered. And then what I can do is I can change the output background. So I just asked it, create an input box that lets me put in a red, green, blue value in hexadecimal. So if I wanted to have the background be black now, I would just change this to all zeros because that's the equivalent in RGB for black. And then the font color, I want it to be red. So the first two characters, I'll change to FF. And then I'll do the others as off, which will be zeros. And then I end up with red text just like that. And if I go in here and I type in like chat GPT um, 03, and then I change the font here, we'll go to like one of these big blocky shadow fonts. Then I can change the background to, I'll do blue in this case. So using just basic masking, red, green, blue, B00, 00, FF. And then I'll change the font color to yellow, which is FF, FF, 00. Now what I can do is I can do a screenshot and I can use Snagit and boom, I've got a PNG file and I can use that for masking. So I'm gonna use this when I do the thumbnail. I'm just gonna do all ASCII art for the video thumbnail. And yeah, this is the graphical user interface. It only took a few iterations to get this dialed into exactly what I wanted. So yeah, very cool. And then what I'll do here is I'll show you the prompts that I used for each one in my mind map. So um, go ahead and get that up on the screen here. I like to stay organized. I use mind mapping software to create visual outlines. So I use this to capture the prompts that I used with ChatGPT 03. So the first prompt here for the ASCII art for text, it was broken out into uh, what five different files that I ended up creating. And the first was the original prompt that I showed you before. So creating the Python code. Then I had some troubleshooting I needed to do because it did give me an error message. I copied and pasted the error message, gave it to ChatGPT03, and then it gave me a new version of the code which worked. But then I decided that I wanted to be able to do the top to bottom lettering that I just showed you. And so I asked it to do that. It generated more code. I had a little bit of troubleshooting that I, I wanted to do, a little bit of tweaking. And then finally I ended up with the request to add the background color change and so that's what I used let's add an option to specify the background color of the GUI so screenshots can be taken and the color can be keyed out and so I gave it an example and it wrote the code so very cool so those are the prompts that I used for the ASCII art for text or doing text to ASCII art okay so here we go this is the webcam to ASCII art and the first iteration that I created it's working you can kind of tell that it's me I moved the camera around a little bit here and it's taking my live video feed and converting it to numbers and letters and symbols and waving my arms around trying to uh, detect the motion and I realized yeah this is totally working but I wasn't really impressed with the grayscale quality. So I went in and I asked it to change the fidelity. And when I did that, it gave me some additional commands that I could use. So when I run the Python file, I can actually specify which camera on my computer was used and then put it into color mode and then also change the frames per second. So there's a little bit of flicker there um, but it's not perfect, but it's literally just redrawing every single screen with now color characters. And I tested this up. I held up a couple different devices. So I have an orange device that I held up to the camera and that looks good. And then I held up my red iPad case as well. So I don't know what the practical application for this is, but I don't know. It's just fun. A copper coffee mug and it worked. So let's go ahead and take a look at the prompt for this one. The prompt that I used for webcam ASCII art, amazingly, this only took a couple iterations here, um, but I asked it to create an application in Python that takes the image captured by the webcam and shows it in ASCII art with high fidelity. And then I didn't like the first version. That, that didn't look very good, did it? So I asked it to fix it. The fidelity is not as good as I want it to be. It's too hard to tell that it's me when the camera feed is converting to ASCII. And then I think it took like, what, 20 seconds? Yeah, 22 seconds. And it boosted the resolution and it fixed the issue as well. So that's the prompt I used for that one. Let's do the image to ASCII art. I 
created an original version of the file that just created a kind of monochromatic version, which looks okay. It's kind of boring though. So I went back and I asked it if it could do color. So it added a color switch and here's an image that I had created in mid journey of a skull and some candles. And it did a beautiful job rendering this out. So you can see all the pluses and the letters and the numbers and all the forward and backward slashes. This is the original image, which obviously has a lot more fidelity, but just by typing in a simple command, I was able to convert the skull.png image to ASCII art. I had another file, which was a panda. So this is a color image, but pandas are mostly black and white, so you can't really tell as much, but that's a color image, and it made a panda out of a panda with ASCII art out of the original PNG file. And then of course, I always have to include our wonderful, beautiful little puppy, Dakota. And I had done a logo for another video. It's Dakota's world and we're just living in it. So it took the original image and converted that into ASCII. It got the nice pink collar and it got the nice white spot. Basically the upside down white arrow that points to her stomach, letting us know she's always hungry. So it um, did that as well. So here is the prompt for that. Let's create a separate file which converts an image file, JPEG or PNG to ASCII art with switches for fidelity and color toggle. Would like to be able to render it in a specific hex code as well. Okay, the last one, this is just for fun. I will give anybody who knows what this clip is a million bonus points. But what I basically did is I asked ChatGPT03 to create a Python code that would allow me to take an MP4 video and convert it into ASCII art, and I can adjust the frames per second. So this one worked. And the prompt that I used for converting the MP4 video to ASCII art was, can you create a separate application which accepts an MP4 video file as a feed and converts it to ASCII art upon playback? It's crazy how it actually just, it, it did it. Like it told me what I needed to do and I fed it, I can just feed it files and it converts it. But when I did it on the first iteration, I didn't like the flickering. So I asked it to be able to reduce the output frame rate to reduce quick flicker effect. And then it gave me a switch where I could adjust the number of frames per second. So yeah, these, these were the prompts that I used to create all of these uh, cool Python codes. So vibe coding in chat GPT 03 is a lot of fun. Again, if you want some assistance in how to get Python set up, it would probably be a 10 or 15 minute video just to kind of walk through those things. So I'd be, I would be happy to do that video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.